What up, fire starters? This is Murthy Money, where we talk about fire and finance and everything related. And today we're going to be talking about something that uh, a lot of people ask about. It's um, what mortgage loan do you want to use for property investing, for investment properties, income properties, whatever you want to call them. This is a huge question because there's a lot of options out there on the market. And sometimes it's just confusing, you know. So that's what we're going to be tackling today. Now, if you're looking to get into investing in real estate in the form of income properties, then you've probably reached the next big question of what kind of loan should you get for your potential property. Now, there are tons of scenarios and options out there. Some are better than others and different scenarios, you know, you might need to use different types of loans. In this post, we're going to be going through a couple of loan recommendations that will save you from wasting tons of your own money and we'll discuss FHA loans, conventional loans, and VA loans. All right, first up, we're going to talk about VA loans. We're just going to get this one out of the way first because it won't be available to as many people. The VA loan is a special loan for military members and veterans. If this includes you, then you get a small perk in the real estate world and for one and possible, possibly two properties. The VA loan allows you to take out a loan for a home uh, that you will live in and you can put zero dollars down. The downside is you can't rent it out legally with um, you know, the initial loan. But after some time goes by, you can refinance it into a different type of VA loan or a conventional loan. And then you can rent it out. Another option is to use the VA loan to buy and move into a home and rent out your old house. I bought my first home on a VA loan. Since I could purchase it with zero down, I instead put some of my down payment money that I had saved into paying down mortgage points. Now this is when you pay the loan company to lower your mortgage interest rate. I ended up paying about a thousand bucks to lower it to a 4.6 interest rate. That made my monthly payment lower and the amount of interest I would pay over the life of the loan a little bit less. Now you're gonna wanna check with the VA and online for your particular area, but there is also a way to buy a second property with your VA loan without selling the first property if you haven't used up all of the allotted amount. It varies by location. Anyways, this is a great option for starting out your real estate investing journey. The second loan we're gonna talk about is a FHA loan. An FHA loan is a mortgage that is insured by the Federal Housing Administration. You can get an FHA loan and put down about 3.5% of the home cost as a down payment, as long as you have a credit score of 580 or more. Now this makes it a great option for first time home buyers uh, but there are some requirements for the property in order to qualify, so always confer with your loan officer to see if you do. Most people might say that you should always put 20% down on a house, and that's true. That's usually the smart thing to do, but I'll explain why this can be good both ways, depending on the situation. Now, 20% down does help lower your monthly expenses so you can get more cash flow from your property. But if you want to make any cash flow at all, you're going to need a property. So let's say you put down 3.5%, uh, which, you know, you actually save up. And yes, your expenses are going to be a little higher. And when I say expenses, I'm talking about the mortgage payments and all the utilities and things like that that come with it. Um, but those are going to be a little bit higher. So your tenant will be paying a higher mortgage for you and you'll get a little bit less off the top. But what this means is you're now in. You are an investment property owner. The tenant is paying it for you and building your net worth every time they pay, uh, pay down on your loan and a little cash flow. You know, you only had to put down a small amount of your own cash. This is what the real estate investors um, take control of anytime they can. And it's called leverage. You're leveraging someone else's money to get the property and then someone else pays them back for you. Another mini loan that you can pair with these loans uh, is called the 203k loan which is money added into the loan 
that you will get for renovations. Uh, make sure you run the numbers, but it's possible to take on a little more debt into your loan, and then you use some of that money to add a ton of value to your property with the renovation. And this adds equity and the ability to rent it out for more, uh, you know, and eventually, you know, it's all on the dime of the tenant. They're actually paying for your renovation if you, uh, if you think about it like that. Now, the one downside of the FHA loan is that because you are putting down less than 20%, you will have to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. And extra monthly fee because you're a bit more risky for the loan company. Make sure you check with your loan officer to see the PMI rate and then add that into your numbers. Uh, you can just use like a mortgage calculator online and um, you know make sure it's still going to work and cash flow for you or at least cut down uh, on your expenses on that front. It can, it can definitely be worth it even with the PMI. If you find the right undervalued property and things like that, you can get out of PMI after seasoning the property, which is you just kind of hold it and you're paying down on it over like a six month period and then you can refinance. But just make sure it will benefit you to refinance because that also is closing cost expenses all over again and you're going to be changing your mortgage rate as well. So it might have gone up in the past six months. Just, you know, make sure you're looking at all these things before you make any decision like that. Now, the next loan we're going to talk about is conventional loans. Conventional loans are what most people get. You can invest with these loans as well, and you can put down between 3% and 25%. You know, obviously, all the way, you could buy a house in cash if you want, but that's not going to be a loan. That's You're just buying it. Now, remember, just like the FHA loans, they have to protect themselves. So if you put down a low down payment, lower than 20%, then you will have to take on, in this case, it's called MIP, which is Mortgage Insurance Premium. Um, but don't worry too much because this one, you don't have to refinance to get out of like the FHA loan. This one will automatically fall off once you hit 20% equity in the property. So that just means as it's getting paid down, one day it's going to hit 20% equity and then boom, all of a sudden you're cash flowing a little bit more than you were yesterday. Now that'll come over time and uh, it's another hack that investors do strategically um, but you could renovate the property right after buying and then get an appraisal and you take that to the mortgage company and they'll show you know as long as it's pulled it up over the 20% equity mark uh, then you're free you know and you have a low in, uh, low down payment conventional loan. Uh, a few extra tips that we're going to go through is uh, mortgage insurances aren't a big deal in the scheme of things. So they shouldn't be a deal breaker, but you have to run the numbers correctly to make sure that you're not just throwing money into these insurance programs. Um, you know, because you're also going to have your regular homeowner's insurance. Um, to get the best interest rates on your mortgage loans, you will want to have a 740 or more credit score. Uh, they literally have to give you their best current rate. Um, and if you want to get access to the best loans, then you will have to buy and move into the new property. The owner-occupied property loans always get better rates and they allow you, they allow you to uh, put down less money. Now, if you want to buy it as an investment property outright, then the loan company might ask you to put down 20% to 35%. Now, this will end up being a lot of saving time. Just think of it as the same as having to move, um, you know, move into the property and rent out your old one. Because that's the same as like, let's say, moving every time your rental lease ended, you know, except for you'll be buying and holding and accruing wealth along the way. The next tip is always get a 30-year fixed rate loan. Don't get any 15-year, don't get any variable rate loans. They're going to kill you. This is going to, you know, get a 30-year fixed rate loan. This is going to protect you from having changes in your monthly payment and it's going to keep it low, low monthly payment as po as much as possible. Cuz 15-year loans, 
means you're going to have higher payments, which means less cash flow from your tenant. Another thing to note is if you already have some income properties, you can use up to 75% of that rental income as income proof to qualify towards your next loan. Um, the final tip I'll leave you with is this. Shop around your loan. Find at least three mortgage lenders to work with. And when you decide what loan you're going to go with, get pre-approved with each lender. And then take the one with the best deal or the lowest interest rate and ask if the other companies will beat it. Then go back and forth until they have all given you their best rates and go with the best one. So many people don't do this. You will save thousands. That was Income Property Mortgage Loans. And if you want more knowledge on any of the subjects, fire, retirement, investing, real estate, credit, credit cards, travel, budgeting, frugality, saving money, earning more money, financial tools and gadgets, then be sure to follow Murthy Money, check out our SoundCloud, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Keep it up, Firestarters.